What is up guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over how you can abuse aim assist if you're a controller player and hopefully improve your aim and play better in Fortnite. If you guys do enjoy this video, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you like to see more, and comment down below what controller you use to play Fortnite. So, for starters, we're going to talk about some misconceptions with aim assist. I feel like some people have way too high of expectations for what aim assist is, and this leads to them thinking that, for some reason, they just get no aim assist. That is unlikely, but there are, I've seen a lot of comments about it for like years online where they seem to think everybody else's aim assist works fine and theirs doesn't. And the likelihood of that occurring is incredibly low. Um, so if you're one of those people, I feel like your expectations for what aim assist is, is probably way too high. There's two main types of aim assist. This is going to be slow down and this is going to be when your crosshair drags over the opponent, you get a brief like lowering in your sensitivity as you drag over somebody i'll have a clip on screen here of me dragging over a bot and you can kind of see it does get a bit slower when i do drag my crosshair over a bot so that is one of the main aspects of aim assist and that is what you're going to notice most of the time is just that your sensitivity is slightly lower when you're aiming on an opponent the next type of aim assist is going to be auto rotation now this is the overpowered aspect of aim assist and this is where it will actually kind of move your aim for you sometimes i'll have a clip on screen now of me strafing back and forth next to a bot and you'll see as i walk past the bot it does kind of slow down i feel like this is harder to notice if you're just watching but when you do this in game it is very apparent to you um, and this is the broken aspect of aim assist and this is something that has been toned down a lot over the years early on in fortnite you could trigger auto rotation just by unaiming in or re-aiming in and so if you were near somebody and then you tapped your aim button, it would like snap you to them. That is not the case anymore. From my understanding, the only times you get auto rotation kind of going on in Fortnite now is when you're strafing or when you are going from crouch to standing or standing to crouch. And that is going to bring us to our first main tip. And that is going to be you want to be strafing in as many fights as possible. That auto rotation aspect of aim assist I just talked about, the broken one, this is most apparent when you are moving your character. If you aren't moving your character, you aren't going to get any of this for whatever reason. So you want to be moving your character as often as possible in fights. Now, obviously, if you're in a super long range fight trying to tap fire with the scar or the tactical pistol, you probably don't want to be moving because then you're not going to get first shot accuracy. And this is one of the main reasons why the red dot assault rifles are so good because since they are perfectly accurate, you can strafe aim and get some of that auto rotation and get your aim assist to be slightly stronger while also having your weapon be perfectly accurate. And then in close range fights like shotgun or SMGs, there's not really any downside to strafing. And there's actually a huge benefit to strafing. Not only is it going to make you a harder target to hit for your opponent, and you should want to make it as inconvenient for your opponent to play the game as possible, you're going to get more aim assist from it. And it also makes it easier to make small adjustments. The reason why controller has aim assist and the reason why it needs aim assist is because it's very hard to make small precise adjustments using the like thumbsticks on a controller but if you move your character side to side it's a little bit easier to make those fine micro adjustments that you need and you'll see pretty much every good controller player left stick aiming or strafe aiming by moving their character side to side to adjust their crosshair in pretty much every game i've played whether it's call of duty fortnite battlefield halo every game rainbow six was a big one every game it like where controllers play or play the game, left stick aiming is very important in those games. So strafe aiming, not only is it going to make it easier for you to make small adjustments, it's going to increase your and improve your aim assist. And then it's also going to make it harder for your opponent to hit you. And then the same thing could be said for crouch spam. I talked about earlier how going from crouch to standing or standing to crouch also triggers the auto rotation for whatever reason, if you're near an opponent. And this is something that you're not really going to do in shotgun fights, but in kind of like close to mid-range AR fights or fights where you're just spraying your opponent down with an SMG, strafing and crouch spamming, hitting the crouch button over and over again so your character just bounces up and down. Once again, not only is this going to make you a harder target to hit, but also it's going to trigger that auto rotation every time you do it. And it's, it's once again one of those things that's kind of just hard to show on a video, but when you're playing in-game, and you repetitively spam your crouch button while strafing, you can feel like how sticky the aim assist is and how like just easy it is to fry people. And this is another thing that's been an aspect of Fortnite for an incredibly long time. Um, so 
yeah, if you're in a fight where you're spraying them down repetitively or, you know, 20, 30 meters away with like a scar or a FAMAS, uh, sh crouch spamming will make it easier for you to hit your shots and it will make your aim assist a little more sticky. And then it also, once again, will make it incredibly inconvenient for your opponent to hit you um, because you might dodge their shots by crouch spamming or just make yourself harder to track for them than you would be otherwise. And once again, you want to be that way. So strafing crouch spamming in those fights is incredibly important i think another thing i see a lot another mistake i see a lot of players making is that they aim down sights with shotguns in close range fights you don't want to do this i feel like the shotguns have like no aim assist when you're going from hip fire to aiming in back in the day this was a good play because of the l2 spam we talked about before triggering auto rotation every time you ads but the game hasn't been like that since like early 2020 i think they patched it out or maybe it was mid 2020 but either way it's been several years since the l2 spam aspect of the game was a part of it so i feel like you often want to hip fire your shotguns um I feel like you just get more aim assist that way. When you aim in, your sensitivity is probably going to be so low that the smallest movement your opponent makes is going to really throw you off. And it just really makes you way less reactionary because you can't be strafing, you can't be jumping, probably not crouch spamming while ADSing. So, yeah, I, I would recommend hip firing your shotguns. Pretty much the only time I ADS a shotgun in this game is if I'm playing behind cover or something, like a bunker, for example, or if I'm in a house going for a right shoulder peek. So if I go into a house and I know the person is chasing me, maybe we'll kind of ADS and strafe out. But that is a very uh, unique circumstance. And oftentimes the opponent like doesn't even have their gun up because they're sprinting or they're in like a hallway where it's very predictable where they're going to be or the doorway itself. It's very predictable where they're going to be so they can't throw your aim off as much. Another huge mistake I see a lot of controller players making is that their crosshair placement is terrible. This is again something that is true for every single game. You'll see a lot of lesser experienced players just kind of have their crosshair looking towards the ground because this does kind of make it easier to see over the horizon and see more around you, but this makes it to where you have to adjust way more to uh, fight an enemy. And if you keep your shotgun on ground level, not only are you going to have to adjust more, but you're going to have to adjust through your aim assist bubble. Because if your crosshair is at their feet and you want to pull up to their head, we already kind of talked about how the slowdown, uh, your sensitivity will be slower when you're on somebody. So you're aim is going to be way slower and you're going to have to make a large correction where if you just keep your uh, crosshair at headshot level or you know body level somewhere upper body level you're not going to have to adjust as much when you do get into a fight and you're not going to have to fight the aim assist as much as you would in the first circumstance so having good crosshair placement is important in every shooter it just makes it to where you have to adjust less in a fight and uh, makes it where you have to do less in a fight and just makes it so much easier to play so i would recommend keeping your crosshair at about head level or maybe slightly under head level uh, and once you get into that habit and kind of force yourself to do that you will see a lot of improvement in your gameplay i think once again this is something that you can get any decent player to watch somebody's gameplay in a shooter and this is something they'll immediately notice is whether or not they have good crosshair placement so keep it at head level keep it in the direction of where you expect enemies to be this is very important in build fights as well or situations where you're making edit plays on people or people are making edit plays on you crosshair placement can like cut milliseconds down on how long it takes you to get on target and that could be a huge difference maker in a fight the final thing we're going to talk about is dead zones so Dead zones are a setting for controller and this the dead zone is basically how much you have to move the analog stick before it starts to register input in game. And the reason why this matters is because stick drift. So if you have a controller that's really worn down, it'll probably start moving on its own and then you can use the dead zones to adjust for this. But having a really high dead zone makes it to where you have to do a lot to start moving your aim and it makes it harder to make small adjustments. So I feel like having a lower dead zone, probably the lowest you can go without getting stick drift is what I recommend. Um, and this makes it easier to make small adjustments and it also makes your aim feel kind of loose and this is important because for whatever reason like we talked about before where if you're moving your character your aim assist is stronger it's also kind of true if you're moving your right stick as well which this is the aim stick so usually in a fight you might not be moving this as much you kind of get on target and keep it there but having a lower dead zone makes it easier to make small adjustments and like I just said, if you're moving your stick, it increases aim assist. It's, again, one of those things that's harder to show. But from what I've been told, this is how Cronus Zens work, which is a device that people use to cheat and get better aim assist. And it, do it isn't actually a hack. All it does is mimic movement constantly. It like makes it to where there's constantly very small adjustments going on, and then it triggers that extra aim assist. So having a little bit of movement on your right stick during a fight can improve your aim assist. And this is going to be 
easiest to do if you're using a weapon that has recoil. So if you're using like the red eye or the scar or the SMGs or the tactical pistol, just kind of pull down slightly on your right stick while you're frying somebody. And not only is this going to keep you on target because you're countering the recoil, it's going to like trigger that extra aim assist of moving the right stick. Uh, from my understanding, like I said, a lot of these things are kind of very feeling based. So it's hard to like kind of talk about them and show them. But you want to be trying to counter recoil anyways with these weapons. If you're just letting the gun kick up completely and you're not fighting it at all, uh, that is, you know, a major weakness. And once again, in every shooter I've ever played in my life, controlling recoil is a part of the game. But also you're going to get better aim assist by doing it in Fortnite. So lower dead zones kind of make that most convenient and it's probably just going to improve your aim a lot anyways if you've never adjusted the dead zones finding the right dead zones for you can be a huge difference maker in your gameplay but that is going to be it for today's video i hope you guys find it helpful or informative i hope you learned something useful i hope you're able to win more fights in game as always if you guys do enjoy this video remember to give a like subscribe to like see more and comment down below what controller you use to play fortnite